so welcome to uh, tutorial 3 uh, rather it's uh, class 2 but yeah tutorial 3 because in the first uh, we were discussing about introduction to Java second was how to install Eclipse uh, Java Eclipse and all and then uh, starting with a simple project so these two things are already done Abhilasha for you I'll just uh, provide you the recordings and if you face any issues in any of the topic do let me know I'll uh, we can have a one-to-one -one discussion across that okay and uh, uh, let me start with uh, variables and data type now okay so uh, agenda for this particular tutorial is what is variable data types in Java discussing primitive data types and then discussing string so these are four things we are going to cover in this particular session let's start with what is a variable so uh, you might have heard about this variable word a lot what is a variable a variable is something which changes its value right so in any programming language we deal with data that can be a constant data that can be something which changes frequently and so on so if I have to define uh, what is a variable a variable is something whose value changes a lot whereas what is constant constant is something which remains whose values remain same okay now when we create a variable in, in uh, Java we need three things first is we have to assign a name to it then we have to assign a value to it and then uh, one more thing we need to tell which type the variable is okay now the type of the variable depends on the data type so variables are nothing but reserved memory location to store values uh, memory is allocated to a variable based on the data type for example if I'm saying int my uh, my first integer boolean my uh, flag status so I'll tell you how exactly they are done in, in your project so I'm just opening the Eclipse this was your project and uh, yes no this was your project and we created day one okay so when you create a new project in this we have an SRC folder where all our code remains so I'll just create one more package in it it will be right click new package and uh, I'm putting day two so today's code complete code will be put in day two here right click new class so I'll create a class with name uh, variables okay for now also I'm keeping this public static void main uh, checked okay and let's say you forget to put that you forget to put this public static void main checked I'm just clicking on finish and now I just want to write that complete thing okay so how can you do that either write it public static void main complete or there is a shortcut and the shortcut is type main press control spacebar okay uh, so when you do it for the first time on Eclipse it always uh, take time and uh, once it goes on not responding mode as well press enter you can see that the uh, it is created automatically so what is the shortcut just type main then press control spacebar you'll get a suggestion press enter and you will get uh, this statement okay any questions in this okay so here uh, I'll start with defining variables so the variables how you can define them it will be data type okay then name of a variable so int is a data type as soon as I put this int you can see the color is changed from see int has a color as black and as soon as I ch uh, write the complete it the color changes to purple okay after that I can give any name say for example my first variable Okay. so when I'm doing this what is happening 
actually it is creating one variable with name my first var of type int int means integer so this my first var is a variable of type integer okay so when we are doing this what exactly is happening at the back end see here uh, here we are saying memory is allocated to a variable based on data type and variables are nothing but reserved memory location to store values so as soon as I have done this int my first variable and when the code will be compiled at that time our JVM JVM is Java virtual machine what it will do it will assign one memory location which is uh, and the size of the memory location is the size of the integer one memory location is assigned to it and a name is given to it okay now this my first variable see uh, whenever you have you're writing any variable name or a already existing method name don't write the complete one just type some initials and press control spacebar it will automatically complete it see here I'm saying my first variable and then I'm assigning some value to it say for example I've given a value 10 so what this statement has done this has created a memory location whereas what this statement has done this statement has assigned some value to that variable so my first variable is given a value equal to 10 clear any questions anyone All good okay so uh, moving ahead uh, then we have a thing that type of data type so there are two type of data type one is primitive data type and second is non primitive data type non primitive are also known as references and objects okay so let's start with the primitive data type so if I talk about how, how many data types are primitive and which you call a primitive see primitive data type are predefined by the programming language so these eight data type which you see below they are something which are defined by Java okay so they they are uh, they are predefined you don't have to do anything for them okay so in the start when Java started these were defined and there are eight primitive data type those are first four if you see they are of type integer just the size varies byte short int long so all the four stores integer type of value then we have uh, double and float for decimal then we have boolean to store true and false and then we have character to store a single character okay so if I say uh, what is the size then these are the size just forget the heading I have to change the heading but I have a look at the size so byte byte is equals to one byte one byte means 8 bit so it can store a value equal to 8 bit and the value range will go from minus 128 to plus 127 okay because 0 is also included so this is the range in which the value will come if you are putting one byte okay if you have created a variable of type short that can store two bytes and the range will be this similarly int int will be of four bytes and can store value between this long long is of eight byte and it can store a value in between these okay then we have float float as as I told you it's for decimal so it has four bytes and the value it can store is this plus minus 3.4028 e uh, plus 38f I mean um, what exactly it means is 6 to 7 significant decimal digit so a number with decimal uh, 7 digit after decimal can be stored in a float okay in case of double it can store up to 15 significant digits okay so this is the range in which uh, float and double can be stored then character character is of two byte and it, it can store values uh, as single character maybe a single a character b character all the sky characters it can store then we have boolean 
so size is not defined for that but yeah the value is there so it can either store a true value or it can store a false value so these are the range and the size of the data so when i'm saying that i created a variable with name int and i'm and the name is my first variable so actually at the back end jvm has created one memory location has allocated one memory location to this variable known as my first where and what is the size of that memory location the size is four bytes why because an int type is of four bytes so here you can say int is of four bytes okay so four bytes are allocated for this particular variable so if i change it to short or if i create another variable short short let's say um, uh, num1 okay then the size of this num1 will be two bytes okay so the memory allocation will be two bytes clear any questions uh, yeah. uh, what about string string i'll come string is not a primitive data type it's non-primitive data type okay okay Okay, so uh, let's see a few more things. Uh, one more thing, uh, which is a feature of your Eclipse. If you observe here, you're getting some some kind of symbols. So you'll get three types of symbols here. Okay, one is the something which is visible here, where you can see it is saying it's a warning. So when you get the complete yellow kind of symbol, uh, that's a warning. Warning means something which you can uh, remain. But yeah, the, that is something which is wrong, but will not affect much. So here you can see that it is saying the value local variable is not used. So what it is saying is you've created one memory location. You're using some memory, but you have not used that value of that variable anywhere. Okay, see here. I just created this variable my first where I assigned value to it, but I have not used it anywhere. Say so for example, I just want to print it so if you recall uh, yesterday's class to uh, print anything we have system dot out dot print ln right and what is the shortcut for that just type syso and control spacebar press enter that will get print okay so here i'll say um, first variable is then I am saying my first where yeah. okay so what I'm doing here is see uh, we saw yesterday that we can print some string and I have a variable so if I want to print the value of the variable as well then you can do that by appending some string okay so I have this string first variable then I put a plus symbol what this plus symbol do this plus symbol is an operator which is used to concatenate so whatever will be the value of this that will get concatenate with this and will get print even you can do without this I mean you can simply print a variable as well so if I execute the code right click run as Java application you will see uh, 10 will get print so here you can see 10 is getting printed okay so if by mistake let's say this console uh, goes away then go to windows go to show view and then go to console it will come back you can stick it here so here you can see 10 is getting printed here if I'll just put it back and execute the code one more point to remember uh, this that uh, whenever I have to run the code I was always doing right click run as Java application right so there is one more way here if you'll see there is this uh, run button and you can just click on this uh, arrow to see which ex class is getting executed so the one which will be at top will be executed if you click on directly otherwise you can select from here as well so here we have the name of the class is variables so from the drop down if I select variables variables will get executed okay so what it is doing it is appending this first variable with that the value which you are using okay 
one more point uh, there is a shortcut to run as well so if you see right click run as here is the shortcut alt plus shift plus X then wait and then put press J okay so I'm pressing that shift alt X and then a J so it will execute the code for that for you okay so try remembering shortcuts because this will help you to execute and to uh, debug and everything really quickly so try remembering uh, these shortcuts so the shortcut to ex execute a java application is uh, shift alt x and then press j clear any questions okay. any questions so far okay abhilasha you have any questions so far okay so let's start uh, with the other thing then okay so we have seen creating a variable now if I have to create a variable uh, another variable maybe uh, now you can see that that the warning is gone because I have used that variable somewhere in some of the statement okay and I was also telling you about what kind of errors or uh, things you get so here you if I just remove the semicolon then you will get this kind of symbol this is a syntax error so if you're getting a cross in complete red that means it's a syntax error you can when you hover over it it will tell you what syntax error it is so syntax error is uh, insert uh, semicolon to complete block statement okay so here when I put this it is gone and then you get one more kind of uh, symbol and that is this okay if you look at here there is you're getting one uh, a bulb symbol with a cross red cross if I hover over it it is saying the local variable my first var may not have been initialized so this is some coding error so whenever you have a coding error you will get a symbol like this so what it is saying is that you created a variable you have not assigned any value and you are trying to use it so what value should it use you have not assigned any value so it is giving you us a error okay so if I just put it back if I assign the value again that error is gone so you get three kind of symbol first one where if you uh, this kind of symbol which is like a warning then you get a syntax error symbol which is like this and then you get an error symbol when you have some logic error then you get a symbol like this so what does this mean this means that you have written something wrong in your code okay okay so moving ahead uh, next we have is some more data types so uh, if I talk about these four data types first byte short int they are like same you'll just have to define the variable and then give it a name okay then we have a long okay long variable so what does this long means here if you see the long is of four bytes and the difference is in the range it has a very big range of values like it can store a big range of values so if I go here and if I create a variable long and here I say my where I created one variable okay and creation of variable and assigning the value can also be done in same line like here I created a variable or I declared a variable then in the next statement I assigned value to it okay but it's not necessary that you do like this you can also do like this long my where then put a value say for example I put a value 89 okay so when you're putting this value 89 currently this value your JVM consider as a integer when it consider it as a long when you put a small L after it okay so to put a long value you have to put a small L see if I put a very long value 
see it will start giving you an error okay when I hover over it it will say see what it is saying the literal of type int is out of range though I am creating a long okay but it is taking considering it as integer value so when it will consider it as a long value as soon as you assign a small L after it so as soon as I assign a small L now it consider it as a long value now it will start considering it in the range of long okay so remember this point though it's little confusing I'll try to explain it again what happens is JVM when you don't put a small L or a capital L you can you can put a capital L as well or a small L anything will do if you're not putting that then your JVM will try to consider this variable as integer only so this is known as type casting we'll discuss type casting in detail later on but uh, just to give an idea this is a type casting so remember when you don't put a small L though you have created the variable as long it will try to consider it as an integer and this crosses the range of integer so you'll uh, start getting an error as soon as you put a L the error is gone because now it comes under the range of long so now you can even put more values till the long range is there clear any questions here all good okay so here if I can just uh, print it so uh, okay I have one more question uh, okay let me put it second where so here if I can simply say my where okay when I execute this code so the shortcut is shift alt X and then a J so this value got printed okay now uh, what if I do this what do you guys think what should come it should print the uh, value 10 as well along with the long value uh, sorry I didn't get you It should print the uh, 10 value as well uh, along with the long value. Okay, you saying so the whatever is the value second var after that it will print one zero as well, right? Yes. Yeah, perfect answer. So uh, when I execute it, Shift Alt X and then J, you will see uh, that after this it has printed one zero as well. Why? Because here we have a string and then we are putting two variables. So what they will do it will type uh, it will concatenate everything okay so one more thing if I just copy it and paste it here and then if I put a round bracket here so now what do you think what it should print as I've put a round bracket what it will do it will first execute this code so when this plus symbol is used between two integer variables or a one int one long or one long one int or both longs whatever uh, combination you try okay, if, I, if I execute it now it will add them so here you can see instead of appending one zero it has added 10 in it okay uh, clear Okay, and Abhilasha, you have a question. When long is most prepared? Is it prepared or preferred? Uh, you mean preferred, right? So when uh, the long is preferred, the only thing is you just have to remember this thing that if you think that the range will remain uh, uh, if, if you think that the range will remain between this int okay see you will be creating variable and looking at that variable you you get you will get what kind of value it, it uh, what kind of value will be assigned to it right so depending upon what kind of value can be inserted 
uh, who, uh, what can you what kind of value can be inserted uh, the size is 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 preferred okay so most of the time 99% of the time you will be using int in selenium at very few areas like uh, when you have to print uh, current time in milliseconds and few more example there you will be using long otherwise uh, these two are very rarely used similarly float and double uh, you can take any one of the two so i prefer double so uh, double will be used corrector i have never used at all and boolean is again uh, used a lot so if you talk about when to use these int is used most of the time at few places you will use long as well at few places double will be used and then uh, boolean will also be used a lot so these are four uh, data type will be using frequently and they depends on the size did i answer your question is no maybe okay so moving ahead then we have another variable we saw was this uh, float and double okay so float and double generally varies with the significant values okay after decimals one can put a value between 6 to 7 digits and the other can put values between uh, uh, which can have a significant value till 15 digits okay now the thing is uh, for selenium for us we generally don't worry about that okay so for us because uh, will not be using will not be having any value which will cross this uh, this range or uh, you can say even will not ever cover the range of float until unless this is something which is a re which is a requirement in your application okay so defining a double or defining a float will remain same the only difference is when you define a double where uh, maybe i am calling it a d where uh, when you creating a double type of variable uh, whatever value you will put that will remain as it is i mean you can simply put the value but if you are creating a float uh, let's say i created a variable f where and you put some values see it will give you an error what kind of error it is giving it is saying quite similar to long this will also give you an error stating type mismatch cannot convert double to float okay so to convert it into float or to tell your system that it's a float value put an f after it okay as soon as you put a f it will start considering it as a float value so for long you have to put a small l or a capital l for float you have to put a small f or a capital l okay uh, so quite similar to it uh, like this long and uh, float are quite similar rest will remain same for us like if you simply use these values they will be used the way it they are okay then uh, we have char and boolean so char is something which can store a single character so uh, maybe some value variable so i created a variable char where and if i put uh, if i have to put some value you have to use single quotes and then a single character okay it can be any character a b some symbol some letter but it should be one single value okay yes jason you have any question no i'm good okay okay so uh, we created a character variable which can store a single value okay then uh, last see if i just change it to some double value it will start throwing error if i add another one it will give you a syntax error stating invalid character constant you cannot store this you can store a single digit it won't give you any error it can store one single 
symbol any sky character you have started it can store that but a single one and you have to put between single quotes okay then last we have is boolean so boolean is uh, let's say I created a boolean variable with name flag so this boolean can store either a false value so look at this as soon as I added this false the color of this also changes because again it's a this false is also a keyword so whatever you see on the screen which is changing its color to pulp purple they all are uh, they all are keywords some kind of keywords okay next we have is uh, the so okay so the next we have is uh, you can also assign the value as true so here you can see I'll put a true okay where these boolean variables will be used whenever we have to take a decision um, or you can say when some condition is is getting true or false there we'll use this flag true and false Okay, so this is all about uh, primitive data types. Now uh, we'll be using these frequently and if you'll have any questions then you can ask. Okay, uh, so this is how you will create different variables and a small discussion. What you have to remember is these four variables, which one? Int, long, double and boolean. Okay, uh, no need to remember range because uh, for us using selenium will never worry about what will be the size of the int what will be the size of the long if you think something can cross int just put a long and have uh, i mean very rarely you will be using this long int i mean int will be used very frequently but a long will be used little less okay uh, okay then moving ahead next data type we have is string Okay, string is one of an example of non-primitive data type but it is used so much and so I mean so frequently that generally we always study it with primitive data types okay so what is a string string can be defined as a sequence of characters so when I created a character variable I mean when I created a variable of type care okay you can see I stored a single value right but when I create a variable string okay string is like this capital S and then string okay look at one more thing here when I'm creating a string variable its color is not changing the reason is because it's not a primitive data type it's a non primitive data type okay uh, so we'll discuss about non primitive data types a lot I mean in discuss once we'll start with classes and objects but for now you can just say that this is one variable string is one variable of non primitive data type uh, and then you can create its variable let's say I create a variable str and rest everything will remain same so str equal to you can assign value to it okay here I can assign it can be uh, kept empty empty means don't assign anything just put double quotes okay then you can assign you can put value to it say for example I'm putting my name is Saurabh okay so this is the variable and you're assigning value to it my name is Saurabh okay so uh, what does this means this means that uh, you have you have assigned a string variable string value to it so anything you put inside double quotes will be considered as string now you can simply uh, print this variable as well so I can say simply str and if I execute the code you can see uh, my name is Saurabh is getting printed okay so any questions in this all good Okay, I guess Abhilash got offline. It's okay, she'll join. 
okay so moving ahead uh, so these were the topics which I had to cover in variables uh, okay uh, next topic for us is operators So presentation for uh, is opening just give me a second okay so uh, the next topic for us in Java is operators in Java different types of operators in Java so these are the types of operators we have in Java okay few we have already seen few I'll explain now so the first one is assignment operator we have seen it a lot assignment operator is when you have to assign value to a variable say for example you have a variable x and you want to assign some value let's say 10 to it so you'll just use a single equal to sign we've used it a lot okay you can see here everywhere we are using this equal to symbol and this symbol is known as assigning operator okay next is and one more point assignment always happens from right to left so here if you see I'm always assigning a value from right to left you cannot assign a value from left to right see if I say uh, this value equal to uh, my first var it will give you an error because you cannot assign other way around but if you assign it from right to left it will work absolutely fine you can see it is working absolutely fine so assignment is always from right to left your constant should always be at right and uh, the variable name should always be at left okay so this is uh, this is assigning a variable next we have is uh, next we have is arithmetic operator so arithmetic operators are these minus plus asterisk sign then a divide symbol percentage symbol plus plus and minus minus so I'll talk about each see this uh, minus symbol minus symbol is to subtract one value from the other okay so I'll create another class Okay, so again I forget to put uh, public static word main right so what is the shortcut just type main and then press control spacebar and you can see it has uh, printed it okay now uh, in this let's say I created one variable uh, first number and another variable second number and a variable result okay so here you can see that I have created three variables in one single line this is also possible give the name of the variable give the name of the data type and then uh, all the variables which you want to create okay so here result is equals to result equal to you can uh, do the mathematical operation here so it will be second number let's say minus first number okay so what this will do whatever value see it has giving me an error because we have not assigned any values to these variables and we are trying to use it so let me assign the values so the values I can assign will be first number equal to some value let's say 10 okay and second number let's say I'm giving a value equal to 40 okay so what does this result will will have this result will have second number whatever is the value of second number minus whatever is the value of first number okay now after this I can simply say system.out.println uh, 
subtraction okay anything anything you can put and here I'll print the result so the result will be this so when I execute this code I can do that shift alt X and then press a J you can see uh, 40 minus 10 that is 30 is printed okay any questions here okay so I guess this is very easy things which I'm covering uh, but yeah why I was covering this I wanted to show you this thing in debug mode okay so for that I'm putting a debug point at this thing so what is debug mode debug mode means currently if you'll see uh, the complete code is executed in one shot I did shift alt X and then press J in one shot the complete code was executed right now what uh, flexibility this debug mode provide us is okay so this debug mode actually uh, helps you to execute each and every statement in uh, one by one okay first number second number uh, then uh, go to result and all so for that you have to put a breakpoint breakpoint what will that breakpoint will do the statements before it will be executed as it is and then your code will halt at this point and then you can execute each and every line one by one with your control it's very important it helps you in understanding the code as well as to finding the error if happens Okay, I'll show you how to execute the code in in debug mode okay uh, uh, Abhilesha you can hear me right so I was starting the debug mode you wanted to learn debug mode yesterday right I'm just starting with the debug mode so if you can hear me just uh, say yes okay uh, you can hear me right yes no maybe okay let me just can you hear me Abhilasha okay uh, please rejoin if you cannot hear okay let me write Uh, yes, yes, I'll repeat the string concept again. Not an issue. I just started with the uh, with the operators, and I was telling about how to do uh, subtraction and all, all. Okay, so I'll repeat string concept again. Okay, uh, but yeah, let me complete this part. So I was just starting with the debug mode, it's debug mode of uh, of this code. So what I was telling is that when you have to execute your code in debug mode just put a double quotes just double click on this blue bar okay uh, see I wanted to put a debug mode at line number nine so I just put a double click I just did a double click and it created one debug mode here uh, sorry it uh, created a breakpoint here now to execute the code in debug mode how you can do right click debug as Java application and you will see that the perspective of the screen will change okay it will show you something like this okay now here if you look at we have got five screens this is first screen this is second screen third screen fourth screen fifth screen just keep those which you need I don't need this outline I'll cross it so I have these four screens with me I need all the four the first screen which is here it tells you at which line number and which class you are okay uh, will be used not now but yeah later on it will be used a lot the most important screen for us is this variable screen because here all the variables and the value will be will be visible 
below if you see here this is the screen where uh, our control is so you'll see uh, the control moving up and down or the flow uh, here and console is normal console okay now uh, we have two options one is step into and step second as step over till the time we are working only in main method for us both works absolutely same but once we'll start working with multiple methods then uh, there uh, then at that time I'll explain you the difference between two so for now either you can do a step into or you can do a step over both will work fine remember their shortcut the shortcut for step into is f5 and uh, the shortcut for uh, step over is f6 okay so I'm press I'll press f5 okay so as soon as I press 5 f5 you can see in the variables and a, a variable is created and the name of the variable you can see is first number and the value assigned to it is 10 because here I assigned a value 10 as soon as I executed the code again you can see uh, that another variable with name second number is created and it has a value as 40 okay now when you hover over these variables okay wherever you see the name when you hover over it here also your uh, your uh, debug mode will open one one window like this so here when I hover over this first number it has a value equal to 10 similarly when I hover over second number it has a value equal to 40 and when I hover over result it is not showing me anything because this statement is yet not executed I'm here means this the statement is not executed okay so here also it will show see the number is 40 here the number is 30 40 minus 30 is sorry 40 minus 10 is 30 just a second okay so the value 40 minus 10 should be 30 so the result when I execute this statement should be 30 so when I execute the statement you can see here the result is equals to 30 okay and here another variable is created with the value 30 now if I execute this statement it will execute it and print that that value okay once all the statements are executed then press 8 here you can see there is a button called resume what this resume will do it will take you to the next breaking point without doing anything I mean without uh, without uh, anything it will take you to the next point and the shortcut is F8 F8 that means I I, uh, I I don't have any other debug point so it will just execute everything at till end and you can see that uh, that red symbol is gone okay now you can terminate all your sessions so here you can see remove all terminated launches just do that everything will get clear now coming back to Java mode will be clicking on Java button again as soon as you click on here you're back okay so this debug mode uh, will help you to understand each and every statement you write every code you write okay I recommend you to uh, initially for first few days uh, use debug mode as much as possible this will help you in understanding the code in detail okay and also uh, you will get into a habit of using debug mode because in selenium in real time uh, the most used thing is debug mode only okay uh, so any questions here all good okay so here we did only a subtraction let's let's do all other operators as well so what all operators we saw we did a subtraction submission add then asterisk is for multiplication this is for division this is for uh, calculating modulus or remainder this is the next one is for incrementing and the next one is for decrementing so I'll show you all quickly 
so here if I change say uh, result equal to instead of minus I'll put a plus symbol okay and here uh, Here uh, it will be addition. I'll go at the end and again it will be result equal to second number, then a divide symbol by first number. So here it will be division. Okay, and then we have is a strict a strict will do a multiplication. And after multiplication, uh, what else we have? Uh, there was one, uh, there was one percent symbol. So percent symbol, what do, what does it do? I'll explain. Just give me a minute, and then uh, I can I can do uh, second number equal to. See, I'm doing a plus plus, and then printing second number. And then I'm doing a first number minus minus and then printing the second number. Okay, now I execute the code shift alt x and then a j. So look at this what is what is getting printed. If we see here first we are doing a subtraction so the result is 30 because 40 minus 10 is 30 then we are addition addition is executed so 40 plus 10 is 50 then a division division is 40 divided by 10 results in 4 multiplication is like multiplying both 40 multiplied by 10 that is 400 then we have instead of division here it will be remainder Remainder is when you divide a number with the other one. What is the remainder? What is the remaining value? Okay, say for example when you rev uh, divide 42 by 10 then uh, The remainder is 2 right so that's what I mean here and then uh, next was So here when we divide 40 by 10 the remainder will be 0 and then we have as what I did second number plus plus so what it what this plus plus symbol will do it will increment by increment your second number by one similarly this first number minus minus this will decrement your number by one so here my 40 got changed to 41 and uh, 10 will go, got changed to 9 okay clear all any doubt in any one of any of this no, all good. Okay, so here you can see all this. So if you, if you have any issue in remainder, I can show you. Instead of 40, I'll change it to 45 and then execute the code and you will see the remainder will change to 5. Okay, and here you can observe one more thing that the division also results in 4 instead of 4.5 The reason is because uh, both of them are integer Okay, so if you divide an integer with an integer your result will always be an integer So to if you want to get the values in in decimal format then change them to decimal and then uh, you will get a decimal result change any one of them is to decimal and you'll start getting result in decimal okay so these this is all about the arithmetic operators we have okay uh, 
then we have relational operators logical operators conditional operators and compound assignments okay so this re these relational operators and logical op uh, the all the remaining one i will teach it with some more concepts because uh, directly telling them will not be a good idea so i'll i'll use them with some some concepts in java say for example for relational operators i can use if else condition so uh, the next topic i'll start with will be if else condition okay so uh, before we start with that can we have a break for 5 minutes now yeah sure okay so let's have a break for 5 minutes and then we'll start with uh, a next topic
okay so we can continue now any questions before i start okay so let me start with the next topic and the next topic we have is uh, conditional statements okay so here i'll just create a new class and let me call it conditional statement okay <coughs> sorry so we have many conditional statement with us we have like if i go with theory we have if else nested if else then only if condition then uh, we have uh, if else and nested if else and then we have switch statement okay so uh, probably i'll recommend you to don't go with the theory but just think what you require and then write the condition okay so i'll give you many examples uh, as for practice which will help you in in writing your if else condition uh, without having a knowledge of nested if else and all just think what you desire and try to uh, mimic it in using the if else condition okay but yeah, let me explain it say so for example i have a variable maybe i created a variable int int uh, first uh, number maybe int number and number i'm giving as some value equal to 10 okay and here i'm putting a condition if number is greater than 10 then print number greater than 10 okay else uh, after that i'm not doing anything i'm just printing i am here i'm outside uh, the if condition okay so when i execute the statement when i execute the statement you will see uh, that this is executed i am outside the if condition why what happened because this number is equals to 10 and the condition we are putting we are saying num greater than 10 is num greater than 10 the answer is no because of that this condition got false this condition was not true so it it skipped this part and executed whatever was there next to it okay same thing if i'll just change it to 10 equal to 10 uh, for equal to we have a double equal to sign okay so single equal to is for assignment whereas when we have to compare two values then we have double equal to so when i execute the code now you will see that the number greater than 10 is printed and then this is also printed okay so uh, here number instead of number I can say equal to 10 okay now uh, so this is the condition if I change it back to let's say 1 and execute it again you will see that only the last line is printed so whenever a con whenever the condition is getting true the statement is getting printed okay now this is simple if condition let's say you want that if the condition is true then something should get print if condition is not true you want something else to get print say for example here I am saying if num equal to 10 then print number is equals to 10 else print number not equal to 10 okay so when I say this then you will see that this statement is printed so in this particular case at least one of the two statement will get print 
if num will be equal to 10 then this statement will execute if num is equals not equal to 10 then this statement will get execute so here you can see when I change it to 10 this uh, first statement got printed so any one of the two statement gets printed okay so this is very simple if if else condition I mean I told you about simple if I we discussed about if else you can have multiple if else condition as well so let's take everything with an example so I'm taking one example greater out of two number finding greatest greater out of two number Uh, so I'm creating one class file where I will be calculating greater out of two numbers Okay, so uh, first of all we'll define two variables one will be first number and second number Then uh, What should I do I should assign values to this so it will be first my bad first number okay it is so you will define first number equal to some value let's say 89 then uh, you will define second number equal to 90 and then I'll put a condition condition will be if first number is greater than second number then I can say first is greater okay then um, what will be next if can I say else second number is greater is it fine or should am I missing anything or or, or this is enough either first number is greater or second number is greater anything I'm missing yes no maybe I think it's enough it's enough what about you Abhilasha do you think I'm missing any statement okay no cool uh, what about when I when the both values are same what about this condition which will get print if I execute nothing will get print or the wrong thing is getting printed nothing am I bad uh, one thing should get print so here you can see we have two numbers first number and second number though both are equal it is giving me a wrong statement Okay, just one point to remember see you all are uh, manual testers or maybe automation testers okay remember one thing test your code also okay so just don't skip any statement otherwise if you're if you have uh, some defects in your automation scripts then you cannot test uh, I mean you cannot guarantee that the application you are testing is correct okay so yeah what should I do here I am missing one statement I have to add that statement so the condition I have to add is else if first number is less than second number then do this and we have another condition we have to add another condition and the condition will be else system dot out dot print and then both are equal Okay, now I execute the code you will see the last statement is getting printed and the condition is is correct clear any doubt cool let like, uh, let's take another example and use this if else condition so the next example I want to take is greatest out of three numbers ok 
okay so here also I want to discuss few things let's let's take this example so again I need some variables so let me just copy these two variables from here third I'll create I'm very lazy person I'll, I'll copy paste a lot okay so here I can say first number second per number and third number so here I'll say third number equal to let's say some value 78 uh, maybe 97 and 90 so we have these three variables okay now I'll start putting the condition so what what should be the condition first condition can be when first number <coughs> greater than second number okay and can I say greater than third number is the is this statement correct yes no maybe uh, I don't think so yes why because whenever you use this this relational operator that is always a that is always in between two variables so it's a binary operation okay so here you need to put like this first number greater than second number and then put an AND symbol and then again you have to put a condition uh, first number greater than third number then I can say that yes my first number is greatest first number is greatest okay then I'll copy this condition okay uh, then okay uh, tell me one thing if I'm writing like this say okay my bad it should be uh, yeah second number greater than let me write like this first number and then here it will be second number greater than third number and then I put another condition if uh, third number greater than first number and third number greater than second number then you can say here uh, second number is greatest here third number is greatest okay and then I'll have one more condition where I can say uh, third number equal to first number and third number equal to second number and here I'll say all three are equal Okay, so I have couple of questions here. Uh, is is the program clear to all? Any doubt in the program? Yes, it. Yeah, yeah, Jishan. No, no doubt. No doubt. Okay. Uh, to you, Abhilasha. Okay, fine. So uh, let's see. I have few questions here. So the first question I have is. Does all the conditions satisfied second question I have is if you see greatest out of two number there we use if then an else if and then an else so what is the difference using if else condition and simply if conditions what do you guys think what what is the difference so this is my second question so two versions first is do I miss any any condition if yes what are those if no fine uh, then second question is uh, what is the difference when I'm using um, if f else condition I have no, idea. Uh, no idea okay 
Abhilasha, do you think uh, I'm missing any statement? Let me execute the code, then we'll see. I think it will print all. Uh, sorry? I think it will print all of the print line statement. No, we have put a condition. We have put a condition, so condition will work. Okay, so uh, second number is greatest is working. If I change uh, this to maybe 90 and uh, I'll change it to maybe 99. Then also you can see first number is greatest will get print. Okay, if I change third, that will also get print. And if I'll change all the three to equal, uh, maybe 99 and then 99, this will also work. So all three will get print. So do you think I have missed any, any statement? Yes, I have missed one condition. What if two are equal and third is not? Okay, first and second number is equal, third is not. If I execute this, see what happens. What, why is not executing? Uh, show view console. <coughs> see when when I'm using this 99 99 90 none of the statement is getting printed I thought uh, it's not showing anything but actually it's not printing anything okay why uh, is, as Abhilasha is saying, else part is missing. Actually, not else, not only else part is missing, but actually, there is a set of condition is missing. That if two numbers are equal, then the condition should, should be, condition should be that I should put another condition where I'll say if first number equal to second number, but greater than third number, then it will be uh first and second are are greater i mean two numbers are greater here so this is an assignment for you you can put uh, add the condition okay but let's see one more thing i'll run this code in debug mode and then i'll run this code also in debug mode and we'll see the difference okay so here right click debug as java application So I'm at this perspective and here you can see we have this condition so I'll, I'll execute the condition I'll say f5 was this condition true first number greater than no the condition was not true so this part was skipped whatever inside this if got skipped then uh, I press again f5 was this condition true no again it got skipped but the last one it does not have any condition so this will get print so no matter what this last will always get print okay so yeah execution happened it's a normal execution you understand now what I'll do I'll just change this 90 to 96 and now we'll ex again execute it in debug mode Okay, so here you can see first number is 96, second number is 90. Observe properly. The condition was true. It got inside this and it executed the statement first number is greater. Then did it go here? I mean, uh, actually it's curly braces and both are same. I'll, I'll run it again. Uh, look at this I executed first statement see it never reached this statement because if in because in if else conditions if any one of the condition is executed then it will not at all execute the remaining one it will just come out and it will come out of this if else loop 
okay clear any questions in this okay. it will not check other conditions so yeah one okay. condition is possible. yeah as soon as any one condition got true it will not check any of the remaining one so here this if else this if condition got true so it will never check the remaining if else condition whereas in the other code the one which where we have um, this one if i put a debug point here and if we run this code in debug mode in this look at how it works my condition is that uh, let me change the condition as well to 96 maybe okay so continue so here what what i'm doing is i'm executing the statement now see the first okay what happened let me restart it okay look at here Uh, so we have numbers this first number is 99 second is 96 so when i executed this statement this condition got true because first number was greater than second number first number was greater than second number this condition got true okay it printed first number is greatest still it is executing the next statement it will check the statement was not true so it skipped the part then it again check the statement again check the statement and then came out okay so uh, what i mean to say here is that if you have multiple if conditions without else then they will check all the conditions whereas mm -hmm. the other one when we have if else then they'll check only uh, only the one, only one condition as soon as one condition got true it will come out so which one is better like if same thing i have to write which one is better the first option right because here uh, we are checking only one condition i mean uh, if if condition gets true at the very start you don't have to execute other statements so your execution time will be better okay though for us it's very negligible for now but uh, uh, later on when you'll have a very good project when a very big project these small things will also matter okay so you have to write your code not only the code you have to write optimized code okay so just remember that you have to write a proper optimized code so here uh, when i have to do greatest out of 3 instead of writing the like this i'll put uh, proper else if conditions okay so i can say again else if okay so yeah now when you'll execute this code again same thing will get print but only one condition will get true so when i execute this code in debug mode you will see that uh, once the first condition is executed it will not check any other execute any other statement will come out of the code okay so you can say that i have written an optimized code here clear any questions yeah it's clear now okay So Abhilasha, any questions here? Okay, just one more thing. Uh, like, is it enough for today, or can I continue for half a more hour? I mean, another with another topic, because it's almost second day. So I want you to understand properly and then only proceed. So if you think it's enough for today, we can end our session here. Uh, and then uh, we'll start to with the uh, uh, switch statement in the next class what about the augmented operators here yeah that that also I'll, i'll that also i'll cover but yeah along with this if else condition and all okay i'll give you many examples to try all the other 
things as well i mean uh, teaching them with a pr proper example will help more so i'll take all the remaining operators uh, with with some examples so next two classes are also uh, on uh, basics of java programming uh, where we'll be covering all these operators uh, for loop uh, then we'll be covering arrays and will i'll give you many assignments in that and all those assignments will have all these operators okay 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 so i so, guess we can end the session today here and probably we'll start with the uh, next topic in the next class and the next class is on uh, i mean i have planned leave so uh, but i wanted to start this batch so i started uh, though only two enrollments i have to look for more students as well so uh, so next class will be on 21st 21st of october okay uh, i know it will be very long gap but sorry for that uh, but after 21 there won't be any leave until unless it is something which is very very uh, urgent okay okay so are we getting any assignment for these two classes yeah. yes yes I, i'll send you the assignment i'll send you both via email yeah via email so i have your email id and abhilasha's email id as well um, uh can you share your email id once more i mean the gmail account gmail email id i guess i forget to save i forgot that sorry yeah i forgot to share it with you so i'll send it to you okay abhilasha i have your email id uh jishan's email id I was asking for Okay, so uh, let's end the session here. We'll start uh, with the next topic on 21st October and assignment I'll send and recordings I'll upload by just after my next class. Uh, I'll start the recording. So maybe by three o'clock I'll upload or, or maybe yesterday's recording is already converted. So I'll just uh, uh, just after the class I'll uh, I'll upload that. Okay, and also I'll share the uh, G, G drive link with you all uh, where I'll be keeping the code. Okay, so the complete code whatever we have discussed today. I'll upload that also there Okay, so Jishan have you sent your email ID? I've just email it to you. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll uh, send you all the details Thanks for joining. See you next. Uh, I mean next to next weekend 21st October okay. and then after that there won't be any any uh, leave for sure Enjoy your holidays. Thank you Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks